MFM Summer Camp is actually a, an amazing experience. It exposes young scholars to the cutting edge research of some of the most distinguished scholars in the field. Another um, nice element of the uh, MFM initiative is that you get exposed to what good policy making might look like, as there are also uh, people from the Fed who are presenting or other policy makers. And so for me, it, it redirects my thinking on which questions I might address in future research. And that's very helpful. Just through the discussions at lunch or at the social events, um, there's so many interesting insights you can collect uh, from uh, other young scholars and you can build a network. And I think that's all what the MFM initiative is about. It's about building a, a network and that's invaluable. So yes, I think it's just a, a great experience. MFM is a very special experience to me. It's such a great opportunity to meet all these young scholars and the faculties and that we can actually just talk about our research in a just around the fireplace or just a casual discussion about economics. Another one of the great advantages has been to become part of the MFM community, to connect with this extraordinary network of students and professors. And I think the summer camp is especially one of the best opportunities for doing this. And there are very few conferences available in economics and I think many fields that are geared towards young scholars. And it's not only been great practical preparation, but I really think it's improving the quality of my research. I think it's extremely important for uh, macrofinancial research to be informed by, by new data and also a lot of institutional knowledge. And one of the great strengths of this conference is to introduce us to uh, new regulations around the world. We've gained a lot of new tools and a lot of great new institutional information that we can incorporate into our research going forward. I think it's actually one of the unique things about the MFM is, is the way, it's not just, not just the topic area in macrofinance and, and systemic risk and quantitative models, but, but the fact that you have together in one conference, you know, even young, but, but also advanced graduate students, young faculty and older faculty and uh, regulators and practitioners all, all together. I, I don't know of any other venue where, where you get that, that distribution across people at different points in their career. And I think, it, especially for students, it's very valuable. Yeah. It's very valuable for them to participate, and, and for me when I was doing it, to participate um, as a peer with people who are in a very different stage of their career. And, and because you need to do that, once you graduate, that's who you will become. And so I think it, 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 it's extremely valuable. And there, there are conferences aimed at young faculty, but I don't know of conferences that bring together young faculty and students and older faculty all at once. I think it's unique. I already found the, the writing of the proposal incredibly useful. Thinking about financial markets, thinking about systemic risk, thinking about the connection to the macroeconomy. Um, I, I knew these were the questions that I wanted to think about, but uh, to, to narrow it down, um, writing the proposal, applying, was useful and was for me really the starting point of, 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 of my dissertation. I have to begin by uh, offering the disclaimer that my views today are my own and not, should not necessarily be taken as the views of the Federal Reserve Bank of New York or the Federal Reserve System. The way my views have evolved since the crisis is that um, I think it's important, as we did before the crisis, to keep looking to try to understand what the channels are. But I think the big lesson from the crisis is that we didn't understand what all the channels are. And, you know, in, in a crisis, it's likely that we won't necessarily understand what all the channels are. So therefore, it's important that the system be robust against disruptions, no matter where they come from. So some of the changes that have been enacted that uh, have resulted in higher capital at banks, more um, actively managed liquidity, more robust risk management and risk identification. I think that's the, you know, the underpinnings that we need to be robust against whatever the particular channels are that link the financial sector to the real economy. You've got to educate academics so they understand the economic role. You've got to educate students because by the time the product is mature, they're going to be the ones using it. You've got to educate the accountants. What's the accounting treatment of a, of a hedge? And then you've got to educate the lawyers about futures exchanges and clearing. So you've got what we call nine steps to go through, and they are, you know, 
education being critical. It is really a complex combination of economics, law, sociology, regulation, political science, all of which has to be challenged when you invent a new market. But I think in, in many cases, especially in China or emerging markets, one cannot take the data at face value. One has to understand uh, structural breaks between, behind the data and also uh, what are some of the policies uh, that have uh, you know, fostered that change. And I saw a lot of very interesting topics um, at, at this seminar, you know, including on housing market and risk management exchange rate in you know, um, uh, different participants in, in the asset market. Um, so those are all, all very interesting. So Andy, what do you view as the success of this MFM project we've done for seven years? Well, you know, I think there are three different levels of success. One, of course, is that we've gotten a lot of great research done by a number of scholars, particularly young scholars. Second, I think we've raised the awareness of our colleagues to the importance of systemic risk and why macro and finance need to be put together. But to me, the most important aspect is that we've encouraged a whole generation of young scholars to go into this field. And I think that's going to be the future of uh, macro financial research. One of the benefits of having this incredible group of students is that I think they feed off of each other. Yeah. And uh, they really have access now to enormous amounts of ideas, opportunities, and just you know, the ability to interact with regulators, policymakers, professionals in the investment management industry, and first-rate academics. I think it's a, a great way to get them going. I do think that the connections that we've made to research leaders in the central banks and elsewhere has put on the table important questions. If we're just an academic only type of venture, then I think we would have potentially missed that. Well, a surprising benefit of these meetings is that the regulators and policymakers have told us that they actually enjoy the opportunity to interact with each other in a kind of a neutral setting. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's one thing for the Bank of England to call up the Fed and ask a question about a particular model. It's another thing for them to be at an academic conference and talk about it at a coffee break or in the middle of a session. It's a much less threatening, formal process. There are a number of stakeholders that are focused on systemic risk. It's not just about the students or the academics. It's really about all of the various different participants in the financial ecosystem. And I think having this kind of interdisciplinary, multi-university, multiple stakeholder kind of gathering really enriches the discussion. And it gives us a kind of impact that I don't think we would have had if we focused just on academics or just on regulators or, or any one organization. You know, one way to quantify it is to take a look at all of the doctoral dissertations that have been funded by yeah. MFM and mm -hmm. all of the students that really have benefited from being part of this uh, organization. Yeah. I think that they're going to be going on and doing continuing research in these areas that will have tremendous impact over time. I also think that if you take a look at the various different organizations that have hired these students, they actually look at the MFM as a kind of a point of pride, a kind of a calling card that we're dealing with somebody that's of great quality. So that to me is a tremendous benefit that will continue to yield value.